helps. Little bit of a late morning start here. Uh, got home late, not late last night, nine or ten o'clock. But just getting back into the grind of things now. I'm gonna swing by the barn, see how everybody's doing. And the cats. And, and the cats. Um, just eager to get started, right? It's like we just picked a team, and spring training has come to an end, and now we're we're starting into the regular season, so to speak. It, it sounds weird saying it like that, but that's how it kind of feels. I suspect uh, to me, um, as as you know, the Ohio Barn is going to be busting at the seams over the next few weeks as we bring horses back. So we are going to move some horses over to Ontario to train back. Country dancing is going over today. She may have already left. Uh, dancing by myself. Uh, those two will join uh, Harry and Dominic. Dominic will get dancing by myself. Harry will get country dancing. I think they're good fits for both of them. And quite frankly, I think they're Mohawk horses. Hey. I think they're Mohawk horses um, when they get them ready. Now, it's November the 3rd. They've been out. Well, Dancing by Myself has been training. He'll be ready within three, four weeks. Uh, country dancing probably uh, closer to Christmas time. First start of the year, or first part of the year, I believe, in Ontario. So, uh, last, night, last night, we had an unfortunate break from uh, Pickpocket. I, I haven't got an update yet. I, obviously, if there was an issue with lameness or something that had happened, I would be informed um, I can't really tell you what happened. I've never seen him do that coming off the car. He got rough. It looked like Kane steadied him. He went to advance and he rolled off stride. So I'm going to have to take a look at um, at what went, on, what went on with him and then make a decision. That is a good class for him and it's where he should be, but certainly not on the run. Guys, what are you doing? Ollie, I think I asked you to help her before today, bud. Yeah, I asked her and she said she didn't. Oh, I see. Um... Uh, a decent race from Three Point Blue Chip. I think when he moved him, I would like to see him advance a little bit more. Uh, Kane put him in a great spot and then flipped him three deep, and he just kind of hung. He advanced down the lane. You know, he's got a good eighth of a mile in him. Uh, as I said to Johnny, one of our partners last night, and maybe, you know, it's not like he had to move him super early. He just had to get him going early, and it didn't work out. He ended up third closing. But again, a good spot for him, it appears. Now we have a new addition coming to Ohio in Yo Mister. So he'll either race at the Meadows or Southern Ohio. I'll talk to Jason and see what classes he fits. We don't want overlap uh, in Ohio with these horses. So um, it's important to see where everybody's going to go. Now, Drebin didn't get in this week. He'll be in to go next week. So does that mean that that class is going to need to split? We may have to make a decision. The only problem with the Meadows and Dayton is... They draw the same day. Bigger problem, the Meadows draws at 9 a.m. and Dayton draws at 1 p.m., which means the draw is already done at the Meadows. So you, it's not like they're both at 9 o'clock and you can work in collaboration with the race secretary to see who's going to get in or who needs to be moved. Totally different situation. One's at 9, the other one's at 1. So we'll have to make, I'll have to figure out what we're doing. Does that mean the pickpocket goes to the Meadows? Uh, because Drebin will get in ahead of him next week. So we'll have to figure out what we're doing. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it overlap. We have options with these horses also. Uh, the same goes for uh, Yo Mister. Uh, I didn't get to finish my conversation with Ron Burke yesterday. We had a quick conversation. Obviously, he was buying and selling horses also. Uh, I told him I would talk to him after, and I did not. I'll talk to him today. Just trying to, just trying to pick his brain what his thoughts are on... One second, sweetheart. What his thoughts are on... Uh, well, quite frankly, those series are going on right now for Drebin in... Uh, Indiana, I forgot all about them. I think we might have missed the first one. Um, is he good enough to go there? I guess the easiest way is just to check and see the entries and results to see if he fits there. Um, memory and imagination won't be ready to come back in time for, for the first couple, I guess. Will he catch the last one? It's unlikely because they, they're done racing end of November. So um, what are his thoughts? You know, Where does a horse like Arson fit? Uh, or do they? does it fit for him? I have no idea. I think we've talked about time is on my side. He'll be coming back in next week, as will memory and imagination, as will a number of others. And uh, time is on my side, it looks like. Um, Nelmore's a 10 at the Meadows, Nelmore's 11 at Yonkers, and then 3 to 5 open uh, at Nelm uh, the 3 to 5 year old open at Yonkers. Megan and Scotty both think he fits there. Um, I agree. Uh, so that's likely what's going to take place with him when he moves out. Does that mean there's a spot for Arson at the Meadows? I don't know yet. I have no idea yet. But these are the things we have to... It's not just easy as looking at the sheet and seeing who's in those classes. It's easy to say, oh, he fits that class. Send him and then he's 12 to 1 going on the track. I don't want that. 
where do they fit? Where is the best place for us to make, as I like to say, those immediate impacts as we get our horses in place and underway? Um, tactical mounds was a little bit flat last night. Uh, Megan Sculptor said there was a tiny bit of blood there, some mucus and redness. Um, so how do I get this uh, upcoming races, but like schedule the week? Uh, I guess I just have to get used to using this from now on. Arson, George of the Jungle. Allie's got great. I was just trying to figure who raced yesterday. Pickpocket made the break. Casanova's Jewel was scratched. Uh, three point blue chip raced good and tactical mounds. Uh, scoped a little bit sick. Uh, my two cents, as I said to Megan last night, she got the TVG left. I would just turn her out. And, and quite frankly, um, you know, Rick knows my feeling in this. If you guys aren't really aware of the situation with tactical mounds, she is Addie down. She is one of a handful of mares, females, to ever break the 150 barrier. She's made upwards of 600,000 Canadian. I would breed her. And I know that Rick is, is undecisive. Rick McPherson and his partner had bought the vast majority of this filly right from day one. So it's a different dynamic. I'm trying my best to just to give my two cents. But Rick's a sharp guy. He understands what he wants to do. And... Um, Right now, he has a lot to figure out. Do we continue to race her? Do we do we race her at five? Do we breed her? My personal feeling is she should be in full to Walner March 1st of 2025, especially after watching what the mares went for yesterday. Oh, my Lord, above. Uh, that was a lot of money spent on brood mares. Uh, you know, it, it's funny because uh, Steve and I talked extensively about... Addie, turn that down. I I know, but again, what's wrong, sweetheart? What are you looking at? And how, how, what time is that? Noon, though. She wants to be there at 12.30, but I have to pick her up at 12. Well, I can take him if my car and everything. So we'll get underway. No big deal. Well, I have to go. I'm going to go there anyway. I want to go see the horses, how everybody's fitting in. So, um, Amy and I are just trying to get back into the swing of things. Saturday, it feels like Sunday, though, doesn't it? I don't know. What day it, 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 it's Tomorrow. weird. You know, I was going to make this, uh, you know, I'm going to do an opening video after this. I was going to turn this in my opening video, but I talked about the racing last night. Talked about how we feel, what we're trying to accomplish for the rest of the weekend. That's the best kind. Is it apple, though? No, it's fruit punch. It's very good. I'm off to, if you guys haven't tried this, Ooh, this sweet. Celsius, uh, do not drink it after 7 p.m. I have no idea what they put in it. I'm assuming it is uh, straight amphetamines. I have no idea, but I cannot get to sleep if I drink this stuff at night. Packs a little bit of a punch. I like the fruit punch one. It's good. Anyway, um, my two cents was, and, and again, uh, I don't own Tactical Mound, so it's, it's, I'm doing my best to help everybody out. I'm trying to walk in Rick's shoes and your shoes and some shoes of Tactical Mounds too. First thing I would do is, is, uh, I would really consider not racing her the rest of the season. Um, and further to that, I would consider uh, securing a walnut breeding to that mare um, and having her in full March 1st. That's my take. Now, as I was about to say, we were talking, I had a great conversation with Steve yesterday about mares, right? Some mares went high, some went low. You don't know what to do. And it's a tough market, right? And it is, it is controlled. Well, I'll tell you who's going to change the dynamic are the Amish. Because there was a lot of straw hats signing for a lot of expensive horses yesterday. I know how they pay doesn't matter they don't pay in goats i can tell you that they um those guys there are going to shake everything up because they're their own clique right before it was all these major farms making all the decisions in the industry and now you have all these amish people that are they don't they don't they they're spending some money you know they they dance to their own beat they don't they're not going to be pushed and prodded in different directions and they're spending a lot of money and what it's going to do is break open the breeding scene over the next three, four, five years, I believe. And as that happens, uh, as that happens, you're going to see a, a pretty dynamic shift right now. You're in a trend. I believe you're in a trend where, um, everybody's pouring money into these brood mares and everybody's spending a lot of money for, for these day one fillies, but they can't all be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. So what the, the sad reality is, is that, you know, for the people out there spending one, two, three hundred thousand dollars on a, a decently bred filly, if she has a mediocre racing career, before we've talked about that safety net, our safety net's a little different. We buy a horse for 40, 50, 60, it's always gonna be worth 30 or 40. You buy a horse for one, two, three hundred, what you're gonna find is you're gonna you're gonna see that that trend 
change a little bit well, over the next. Everybody can't get the most out of the course. And that's that's and what I'm saying is that. of good ones, they're all going to be cheaper. I think before you'll see a trend where there was a lot of Colts in the in the you know a lot I of Colts. Feel bad for the Colts. Why do you feel bad for them? They have great breeding also, and they get no respect for. That's good for us. No, I just I'm just saying like. Yeah, you know, what we're trying to do is stay ahead of the curve. Right? We had our maros that we had. Now, this year, we have six maros ready out for sale. And don't kid yourself. They're not bringing 100000 200000 But they are going to bring decent money because they're decent maros. And everybody is looking at the same thing that we just saw. This this aggressive... I hate to... I refuse to use the word robust. See, because we used to use that in politics all the time. They're always looking for these buzzwords. And robust has stayed around for a long time. But it's really just annoying. It's an aggressive breeding market right now. But that trend won't stay forever. Now you have these flo this flood of really expensive, deep, deep pedigreed mares and fillies right now that are entering the market. Just look down the road. It's supply and demand. If you have 50 well-bred mares, it's going to drive down the price of mares, right? And that's what you're going to see over the next two, three, four years. Is well, that and also, you're going to be able to get a decent... Oh, yeah, hundred percent. Nice mare you're for good. like exactly. Cheap. Well, not cheap, but you're going to get it on on a on a on a buyer's on a price because there's so many of them, right? Which and sucks for small breeders because the big breeders don't care. Oh, They've already got the big. But the have. but the smaller breeders also, you know, it's and a, and a guy like Steve. This is so intriguing because a guy like Steve, he's got some. He's got a couple of really really well bred mares. That he's bred and he was disappointed, I think, with his prices. He knew what he wanted going in. He got a little south of that. But I remember, and I'm not going to drop names, but there are a couple of very, very prominent breeding operations right now that when I started going to the sales just a decade ago or more, like to really look, not just a, not because I'm curious and hoping something falls through the cracks that I can, you know, put in a shopping bag and go home. But when I started really looking, there were a couple of very prominent breeding operations that weren't doing that good. And then all of a sudden now they're crushing because they've done well. And the other thing is, people remember, right, when I go to a consignment and you buy horses out of that consignment, you flock back to them, right? Because you've done good there. And there's other places that, that runs the opposite, right? I think, too, like, I think, not that this has anything to do with what we're talking about, but you know how certain people get certain respect for, like, oh, yes, I... You know, they'll spend a lot of money on a yearling, so they cater to those people. Yeah. I think you, are for a different reason, because they know you bid a lot. And that's and the whole thing: is that we're one of the rare, we're one of the rare beasts in horse racing, and the breeders are starting to recognize this now. And Amy's 100 percent right. I'm, this is going to turn into my opening video. It has to. Now. Well, I'm just saying because that's it's not right. that we have a ton of money to spend, but, but you we bid, bid, right? And that's the one thing. Horses. That's the, you're 100% right. That's the one thing that breeders recognize. And I never noticed that until Bob Brady came up to me about, what was it, two or three years ago? He said, they should fly you in here. And I said, excuse me? I didn't really know the gentleman that well. Super nice guy. Big, big breeder in Kentucky. Kentucky and Firms. He said, I just sat back and watched. He said, I don't think there wouldn't be five people in this industry that bid on as many horses as you do. So I explained our process to him. He goes, I get it. He said, I think that's the way to go. He said, one, it helps me because you're going to turn my 9000 or my $20,000 yearling into a twenty nine or $32,000 yearling. So it helps me. He said, but it also helps you chase the price you want. He said, it is good for the industry because if everybody just went there with a list of 10 horses to buy, they'd all be looking at the same 10 horses, right? And we don't. You know, it, it was funny and I didn't realize it until uh, Mark Lowy had said to Steve, he said, we come up and he was so surprised. Mark looks at me when we went to the Hanover consignment. Now, for those of you who don't know, Mark Lowe used to run the Meadows when I started racing there. Really nice guy, sharp guy. And now, uh, uh, I don't know his exact title with Hanover, but uh, he was in charge of, of all the clients and everything, working with all the babies. He was the front guy. He was the face of Hanover when you walked into the consignment. Now, he asked me to come look at babies. I was never asked to go to Hanover before. Not one time. All those times the planes went down to Hanover, I was never asked to go. And this was the first year I was asked to go. And I said, honestly, I can't. I'm racing horses. But my partner, Steve Palermo, can go down. Steve went down. He pulled out 103 horses. Now, for those of you who don't know, the entire consignment of Hanover was 209. I walked into Hanover's consignment. He goes, what, what do you need to be here for? He said, you pulled out over 100 horses 
American Simon. It took two flights. It took two days for Steve to do that. And I said, yeah, I said, well, I want to recheck everything and look at everything. But we went through it. They were so surprised how many horses we pulled out. Of those 900 horses in that sale, we pulled out 550, mm -hmm. 600. But that gave us the opportunity to do that because we, we could spend a whole day. Oh, just in Hanover, there. you could have went a whole day. So you're right. Do, going Doing that saved us. Well, we wouldn't oh, have been able to look at that many horses. No, we so we probably looked at two-thirds or more of the sale. Of those two-thirds, generally speaking, maybe not in Hanover. I was much more subdued in in in, Le in Harrisburg. But in Lexington, I probably bid on 120 horses. Now, you think about that. If you're a breeder, you're 12, turns into 17 because of me, right? You're 20, turns into close to 30 potentially, or 26, 25 because of me. And there isn't a lot of people, and that's not me saying, oh, you should pat me on the back. No, but that's an understanding. I didn't I didn't realize it until somebody pointed it out, and, 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 and I was recognized for it. So it's important for us to be at the sales, and understanding the sale trends is important also. I guess it's much like the stock market, which I know nothing about. But understanding the trends of racing, you know, I see all these expensive fillies being sold. 100, 200, 300, 100 horses that we had priced at like 50, 60. And that certainly is by no means a Bible. That's super subjective. That's just my feeling. Take nothing from that. But when I see all these expensive fillies being sold, I wonder what's going to happen in three years when everybody tries to sell their fillies back to animal. Well, and, back that, to and, and that is why I think it's so important that Tactical Mounds gets bred. I agree, hundred percent. Because you don't want her fall coming out the year after everything. That's right, and it's not that it'll fall apart, but there's always that reckoning, right? There's always that balancing, where you go from this year everybody buys these super expensive fillies, and then in three years' time they're sitting there chewing their nails when they're in the ring, saying, "What happened?" There's fifty of them. There's not ten good horses. There's fifty. And again. It's just my two cents when it comes to what is going to take place. And I think it only played into why we were able to buy those Colts. Everybody was so enamored yeah. with buying Phillies. We never got me. I could have bought a couple of Phillies I liked that were in our price range. That That's on me. I believe maybe that was an error. There was a couple of people sent me messages. Hey, what happened with this one? What happened? The, in, in fact, the people that sent messages, I, I did email one gentleman back. They just weren't. There were some imperfections, pretty visible ones. The one filly with the boggy hawk, mm -hmm. the other filly with the other hawk that was big, you know, stuff like that. There was another filly. Well, for the price they're going to go for you, they better not have issues. Well, yeah. You can say to yourself, hey, that horse is a $55,000 horse, but with that imperfection that I believe I can work with and manage, yeah. I can give you twenty five dollars or twenty two, dollars but I'm not giving 70. you fifty. dollars And then it goes for seventy. Yeah. just like you said. It was just, it was... But I, I understood what was taking place. Everybody saw all these expensive fillies, and they're like, "Oh my God, I got to get in on this market." Well, what they're going to, do, what they're going to do, in, in my opinion, is three, four, five years from now, when those got, when they got those foals rolling through the ring, they may not be quite as happy as as they were yesterday and the day before. But again, I could be wrong. So we talked for six, seven, eight minutes. Yes, honey. Hey, do you do that at school when you want to talk? Your teacher told me you don't raise your hand at school, but you raise your hand in the car, huh, Con? Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm looking for someone whose tooth is half hanging out. I know someone. Oh my gosh, Addy. I know someone whose tooth is falling out. You gotta pull that out. Do you want me to pull it out with my fingers right now? It's just hanging there. It's literally sideways. It's just hanging there. Do you want me to pull it out right now? Okay. Well, we got a, a tooth fairy visit coming. Uh, Addie bear has got a tooth about to, she's about to lose. So anyway, uh, I guess a long winded way, I started this being a video on Saturday and ended up being our opening video. I was pleased with the way the horses race this week. Sure, we could have done better. Save America, I thought, was a tiny bit flat, but he'll bounce back. That was him coming off the virus. You know, pickpocket made a break. That's rare. It doesn't generally make breaks. And we'll straighten him around, and, and where we race him next week's a problem. Yo, mister, yes, he is in Ohio. He can either race in Ohio or Pennsylvania. We can do what we want with yo, mister. He can head to Indiana for the last three weeks of the season also. I'm just going to talk to Ronnie and see. The thing with, with sending the horses to, to Ron Burke is there has to be a hole in his, in his 
string of horses, right? He's not going to take our horse over his own horse. So if there's a horse that maybe he doesn't have for that class, that's when we would fit those horses in. So I'll talk to him about a couple of horses today. Um, and furthermore, where we're going to send them, we are likely going to send Time is on my side down to Megan, I believe, um, in about three weeks' time. Tim was the one that mentioned it. He knows what's going on uh, and that there's a good class down there for him. But as time leaves, there may be a spot for Arson to move back in there. I don't know if he can do in the open, and it's a really, it's a really tough ask. But at the same time, those those stalwarts, those horses that have been going there all summer, are they a little softer? Don't kid yourself. Arson can pace 150 right now and 151 at the Meadows. But is it the best place for him to be for us and for him? Is there a better class for him? I don't know. We'll find out. Over the weekend, now I'm flying out tonight. I'm going to Indiana, or I'm going to Illinois. I'm going to race those horses in Illinois tonight. I'm going to take my iPad. I'm going to make up a little spreadsheet. And I'm going to look at all the horses and where they fit. I did the numbers. We have 49 yearlings. That's how many yearlings we have right now. And I told everybody around 45 we'd have. But we did have some private horses come in. Patty. We're going to have uh, a stay hungry pacing colt arrive on Monday. And we're going to have a goo goo gaga filly. She might be arriving today. I think they're picking her up in a hundred and today or tomorrow. But I think Patty told Jason everything was happening. Right now, my biggest concern is Northfield horses. They are, the barn is busting at the seams. We're trying to move everybody around accordingly. Yes, dear. Oh, that's right. Do you want to know their names? Uh, Leland Hanover was one. Sterling Hanover. Tavion Hanover. It's like Ollie McDonald, Amy McDonald. They all came from the same big barn. Tavion, Sterling, Leland, Perfection Hanover. Uh, Go Strong Hanover. And, no, Go Strong Hanover is five. Leland, Perfection. Uh, Tavion, Go Strong. We bought a horse he named Cherry's Girl. Who's the sixth one? Who? Sterling, Sterling Hanover. Sterling Hanover is the sixth one. Like yeah, I know. That's his name, Sterling. So we have six horses that we bought, and then we have two horses that people are sending us. Now we have our homebreds also, a whole bunch of cool stuff we're looking to do. Uh, I'm just going to talk to Eric and John this week about what our options were with our homebreds. Are there any types of incentives we can offer uh, this year. I, I don't really know the best way to sell our home brands to, to them, to our clients. I think they should just... Maybe we video them, just like we do our yearlings in the in the start of the summer. Just video them, like we're prepping them, and send everybody the videos. I, I don't know the best way to do it, but for this year, we're looking at the best way, obviously, and John, uh, John was also the one that said, you know, Black Friday's coming up. Is there anything we can do with Black Friday? And I told everybody, we do have some racehorses and three-year-old shares on the board. We can work to, to drop them down. I, I don't have a big sale. For, sale? Have, a, have a Black Friday sale at the barn. What that looks like, I have no idea. But we're going to try to. So a lot of talking. I turned my, uh, my Saturday video into an opening video. But it was important. I was happy with the way the barn went this week. Could I have been happier? Of course I could have. I was very thrilled with the way the sale went. I do feel that I let everybody down not getting that second PA trotting filly. We had options. That That's going to bug me, that uh, bar hopping filly that went for 38. That's going to bug me for a while. And Steve's. I'm going to... And who? Steve's. And Steve's filly. Steve's filly was the best looking international money in the sale and went for 32. That's going to bug me. Probably going to bug him too. Mm -hmm. I just... I, I just didn't feel, you know, I, I got caught. I tell everybody, don't get caught looking on the other side of the fence. The grass but is not greener. I got caught doing, I did, I had the limit, and Steve was right. Was the was me playing into that seven and under, did it play a role? Probably, I suppose. I just wanted the perfect horse for us. And plenty of very, very good horses went. I let them pass. That's on me. But thoroughly pleased that we come in, truthfully, if you would have said, all right, these are the six you're going to buy, way under what I thought they would have went. Leland Hanover, we were going to six figures. We got them for 35. Somebody said, well, then I guess you, you were wrong. Okay. How so? 
that's how the sales just work, right? Just think everyone was so focused on Phillies. I was just about to say that. Everybody was so enamored with Phillies that they let a lot of good Colts go through. Now, the Colt was a June 11th Colt. We didn't need Colts, to be he honest. He was... We didn't, but we need good horses. Right. And this is the most important thing they said to Amy and Steve and John. We were all trying to figure out what's the best to do. And John was the one that actually said it, I believe. The best horses we can buy should be front and center. Yeah. The sex of those horses are important also, but the best dollar for dollar horses, that is what we're all about. And he was right. That is what we're all about. You're not going to beat the price on Leland Hanover. You're not going to beat the price on Perfection Hanover. Yes, he was a tall, dark stranger, but I told everybody that's one of the storylines of 2024. If you want to gamble, there's your gamble right there. We got Poppy Rob Hanover's brother, and he is beautiful. We got Poppy Rob Hanover's brother at $27,000. Oh, you're going to see in a minute how beautiful he is. Beautiful. He's very, very pretty. What's that? Lots of time. You don't have to pick Avon until 11.30. You know, I can drop Ollie off. It's fine. I can take him back home and go to the airport. The airport's 17 minutes from the house. I get no problems. I can take him to flag football. Does he just need what he has on? Is that on? Oh, your receiver gloves. Yeah, and Randy and Moss. I think you'll be all right. Why couldn't you wear your mouth guard the whole way here? <laughs> okay, that is my bad. Hey, Dad. Yeah, what? I just pulled it I know, great. Um, so, i uh, just thoroughly pleased with the year. I know a lot's been going on. This video is kind of all over the place. But you know what? I think everything we said needed to be said. I think this was the year of the Philly. We bought Colts. We try to be where we need to be for the most value. And I don't think anybody out there, no one watching this, can say that we didn't find some great value in Harrisburg, that we didn't find some great value in Lexington. What Phillies do we buy in Lexington? We bought plenty of Phillies in Lexington, none of the PA ones. And the cool thing was, Cherry's girl, too, I told you, she's eligible in Virginia. Now, I don't know how Virginia works. It says Virginia... Uh, the Virginia Breeders Fund or whatever. I don't know if that's a Virginia Stakes or whether that's some sort of offshoot stake that they offer down there. I'm, I'll have to look into it. But she is PA in Virginia, which is the first time ever. We've never had a Virginia bred before. So she is a Captain Corey, Pennsylvania trotting filly, also eligible in Virginia, which is really cool. Yes, dear. I don't really know if that's a video question, though. Do you think, Addy? Yeah, but how big are they? I don't know. We're going to find out in a minute. You know what else oh. is going to be big? <laughs> that's right. So, with that, we talked about the sale. Oliver, we talked about the sale. We talked about uh, the babies. We talked about my thoughts on the trends that are coming. And how hopefully, whether it be somewhat inadvertently or on purpose, some of them, we found some values in a sale where there generally isn't. You don't get to usually buy uh, day one horses for what we bought them for, right? You don't usually get to buy the deep pedigree colts that we bought for what we bought them for. And maybe it's a tall, dark stranger. You know, maybe maybe it was a June 10th Ridgeling. Maybe it was a number of things, but I think we did a very, very good job. And I think it is important to thank everybody. Amy, I know, it, it, you know, she's got a million things to do today. And I know we probably should have left on Wednesday. Thursday and Friday were kind of write-offs. But at the same time, we know for next time. Um, you know, going down, looking at all the babies. I know she loves to do it, and I love to do it, but it's still very time-consuming. Steve, for the flights to Hanover to look at horses, yes, he was looking at some for himself. But still, the flights to Hanover, you know, that's that's a, that's a days out of your calendar that are gone. John, you know, he makes me look lazy. And he took days out of his calendar on his birthday too snuck into Harrisburg it was his birthday on Monday told no one went in looked at horses all day went through the sale never said a word to anybody it was his birthday down there Monday Tuesday Wednesday away from his family or Monday Tuesday left Wednesday morning away from his family that's probably what we should have done and and um you know Rob and, and Randy and Bob and everybody that played a role. You guys have to understand without these guys doing the roles that they do. Curtis, you know you see Curtis and like Jen, like Jenna, Jenna, yeah, Jenna cool. Otten came all the way down for for peanuts to come down and do those show, shows in Harrisburg. Everything that we do to try and make things 
more exciting and entertaining for you takes time and the people's schedule. And I want everybody to understand how, how appreciative I am because my schedule is such that sometimes I go by. I didn't say, hey, I don't remember saying, hey, I truly appreciate what you do, Jenna, and thanks for coming down. I don't remember doing that. Anyway, uh, that's what that's what's going on today. Uh, I'm off to uh, I'm off to the barn right now. I'm off to uh, Illinois this afternoon. We get Allie Scott Grit, and we have uh, what a lady, what a night. I did off to stay and drive the two horses uh, later in the car, so I had to change my flight. I'm flying out tomorrow morning. I'll be back uh, early tomorrow morning. Lots to do at the burn. A lot of restructuring to do at the burn over the next little while. And that's not a bad thing. You know, I don't mean that in the, in the poor sense of the word. It's just who do we have to have in, in Ohio because it's going to be tough to keep everybody here. Now, what's our best options? Who do we utilize for Dominic and Harry in Ontario? I mean, lots of horses. Horse like country dancing in Harry's barn. Perfect fit. Horse like dancing by myself in Dominic's barn, perfect fit. That horse, I, I am certain that horse will be a Mohawk trotter at some point, uh, either in the latter stages. Of, well, no, it'll be the latter part of 2024. It's November 3rd. I trained him at 15 the other day. He'll be ready to go before Christmas. So all this stuff is rattling around in my head. Uh, it'll give me some time today in the airport to think about that and on the flight to sit down and, and try to visualize who needs to be where. As of right now, the stable.ca has 49 yearlings. Um, we have to get all those horses finished up, broke and going. Uh, uh, Sterling Hanover will not be broke until December 1st. We took some OCDs out of him. Everything is great now. We have a clear path forward for him. And, and if that was the reason he sold for less money, I wish that more people would post their vet records. I would have been happy if you just said to me, hey, uh, this... I don't want to drop numbers. This very expensive colt that I had priced. I, I priced him so high that I didn't even vet him out before the sale. I just didn't think we were going to be able to buy him. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I was very happy also. Uh, the night we bought him, I ran into Marcus Melander. Good people also. And Marcus said, it told me exactly what they had found. A couple OCDs in the horse. I called Dr. Brown right there at 9 o'clock at night. Dr. Brown picked up. Dr. Brown. Dr. Brown, you'll meet Dr. Brown. He's a very, very nice man. He's like Dr. Mike. Very nice. Um, Dr. Brown said, drop him off on the way home. We're home now on Saturday. Um, yeah, you guys are home. We are home. All the OCDs, uh, the, the OCDs are out of uh, Sterling Hanover. Completely fixed, ready to go. Well, not ready to go. we got to wait two weeks, and then Amy wants to put him in the aqua treadmill for a week. If, if... Dr. Mike thinks that's a good idea. Maybe you might need a tiny bit of TQ to go in. Imagine putting a baby in a treadmill full with water. Maybe not you don't have to put water in. I think we'll put water in. We'll see. Maybe a little TQ and he'll be fine. Um, and uh, the other horse. A TQ do? A tranquilizer. Just take the edge off them. Um, and who's the other horse? Uh, Leland Hanover had a small OCD left front ankle and was originally. So when we were there, took the OCD out of his ankle, castrated him so he's no longer originally anymore. There's no excuses now as he trains down. I am thoroughly pleased with everything that has transpired in Harrisburg. I did stay under my seven. I did stay under my he's seven. really dragging this video out. Take it. I you think did. you could have closed it like eight minutes ago. You didn't just say that. I just, I just Maybe I'll have Curtis cut it the parts where you were talking. Okay. Won't even get to eight minutes. Apparently, my video is dragging on. I'm blabbering, as Amy says. Video's all done. Happy with Harrisburg. Happy with the racing this week. We need to do a better job next week. We're on it. We're going to get there. Uh, get all the babies broke. And then, as I said, figure out where everybody's going. Uh, it's been a great summer. It's been a great year. It's been a great summer. It's been a great fall. We'll talk to you all very soon. Have a wonderful, bye bye. have a wonderful um, bye bye. rest of your weekend. Take care.